Hey everyone, my name is Emily and I work in Simple Boots Customer Support Department. I'm here today to share some information about our new and improved live feed feature. Simple Booth has had a live feed for a while now and what this does is displays a slideshow of the pictures taken during events with both Halo and Virtual Booth and puts them into a great looking display of photos that you can then project onto the big screen if you have one available at your venue. It's a great way to increase engagement with a photo booth and we have recently made a lot of improvements to it as well as added some great new features to play around with. Live feed is available on all Halo plans with just a small difference between a couple of the plans. So let's dive in and take a look at what we can customize. Okay, so we are here in our account already. I have made my way to my galleries tab at the top of my settings. Since the live feed is based on your gallery settings, the live feed panel is going to live within each of your gallery settings. For the purposes of this video, we wanted to have a good number of photos in our gallery to show off. And so we'll be using this old event from 2019. This is a party that Simple Booth threw a few years back. So we'll open up our settings. And the live feed panel is going to be the very last one in the list, but I do want to pause briefly at this themes panel. The theme customizes the color scheme for the gallery itself. So this customizes the font and background color on the page where participants are first looking at their photo. This theme can really easily be applied to your live feed as well. So keep that in mind for when we're looking at the settings later. Again, the live feed panel is the very last one here in the list. So scrolling to the bottom of the page, we will see at the top of the panel includes our live feed link and this top section is going to be the same for all uh, account tiers. So this top section includes this link with an easy option to either copy it with a clipboard or open the link in a new tab. The bottom part of this panel is where things differ between the accounts. So the bottom part of this panel includes our advertisement settings. These ads will display periodically during your feed and are only available on the standard and pro tiers. The standard tier accounts include one ad per live feed and the pro tier accounts include unlimited ads per feed. Our special event and light tier plans do not include advertisements at all. So on those plans, the top section of this panel is the only thing that you will see. We've already got an ad loaded here, as you can see. So um, the other customization options are going to be available on the gallery itself. So let's go ahead and open that up. I copy my link and I am gonna go over and open it here in an incognito tab. This is effectively the same thing as running your live feed while signed out. And what this does is ensures that any photos that you have marked as private on the page aren't going to be displayed during your feed. We do have some of those photos in this gallery and so we, we wanna make sure that they're not displaying either during this video or on the big screen at a venue. If you're not sure how to mark a photo as private on your own account, we'll link to some helpful resources on that in this video so you can take a look and accomplish that for your own events as well. You'll see that things are cycling through already and once you start to hover over the feed is when our settings options become available. So you can enter full screen from the top left corner, which we won't do quite yet, and then access the rest of the settings from the top right corner here. This very top photos section includes a couple of different settings. Number one is how many photos you would like to display at once. So you can toggle from anywhere between the 25 most recent photos added to your gallery and 1000. This is a really great tool to restrict things to only recent uploads. Some permanent installs might have pictures in here from months or years ago, potentially even, and most people prefer to see pictures that are being taken that day or that week. So this really helps show only the relevant photos. We can toggle this to 100. The next option here is the feature photos option. And so what this does is anytime a participant is adding a new photo from your booth to your live feed, the live feed will pause and display this individual's photo for a brief second before continuing on with the rest of the cycle. So I've got my iPad here and we are gonna add a new photo to this old event. And we will send this through. And this is a great time to note that the picture may not appear right away. 
It does depend on where you're at in your feed cycle, as well as mainly the strength of the Wi-Fi network that you're connected to. So if your Wi-Fi network isn't the most reliable, it might take a couple of cycles for this individual's photo to actually pop up. As we can see here, um, my Wi-Fi isn't terrible, but it still can take a cycle or two for it to populate. So it's definitely not a need to worry if things don't show up right away. You can rest assured that this photo eventually will cycle through after a couple of rounds. So we will see that populate. Before we move on, and here that is, before we move on to the next section, the transition section, I wanna pause and take a look at this URL. You may have noticed when we toggled to 100 most recent photos that something was added to the end of the URL here. Going back to our gallery settings, when you copy the link as I originally did from the setting page with a clipboard, you'll see the URL is a little bit shorter. And what this does is shares your gallery with the default settings. If you need to share specific settings that you don't want your client or brand ambassador or whoever is setting up the booth at the actual event to change, what you wanna do is come in here, customize all of your settings, and then you'll see as you customize, your link will grow longer and longer. At the end, you'll customize that full unique URL and pass that along and be sure that your settings will be preserved for whoever is actually running your feed. So you'll see that continue to change if you pay attention while we toggle these other settings. Down in the transitions mode um, section of the settings, what this does is displays or changes how the photos actually appear um, while cycling through your feed. So the first one I want to touch on is the visual effect. We have been watching the scale effect and uh, if you notice, it scales the photos larger and smaller to populate them on the screen. We have a bunch of different options and so you can choose the one that you like the best. Um, this one's totally personal preference. There are some tips and tricks that we have on specific visual effects um, that don't necessarily work well with certain layout types. We'll spell out those tips and tricks at the end of the video. Um, but this is something that you can definitely play around with. As for the refresh mode, we have been watching the cascade refresh. And what this does is it cycles through all of the photos in your layout in rapid succession, one after the other. At the end of each cycle, we have a delay, and that allows folks to have an opportunity to view all of the photos that have just populated. That's five seconds by default. The other refresh mode that we support is an individual refresh mode. When we toggle to this, you'll see that the photos start to cycle through one by one rather than in rapid succession, everything on the screen. So this is just a slightly different way to view them. And again, is a personal preference thing. When you change your refresh mode to individual, you'll see that the delay changes to a delay between each individual photo. So again, this just allows the photo to spend more or less time on the screen. We typically recommend using a shorter delay when you have more pictures on the screen and a longer delay when you have fewer pictures on the screen. That helps with just the flow of the way that your live feed works and looks. The next section here is our layout section. Auto layout will always be selected by default and what this does is automatically determines your screen size and then chooses a number of rows and columns that best suits your screen size. If for some reason that doesn't translate well or you just don't like the way that it looks and want to do something custom, you can always disable this and then manually enter your number of rows and columns. So we'll add another row here and take a look at what that looks like. It sometimes doesn't stick if you increase that as things are transitioning as we just saw that ad was loading to the feed and so my extra row didn't get added. But that's easy to toggle. Now you'll see this feels a little bit slow with more pictures on the screen. As we just mentioned, that delay just feels like every all these photos are staying on the screen for a little bit too long. So you might bump that down and, and see that feels a little bit more appropriate. So this is certainly something that you want to play with based on the layout that you have selected. The last setting here in our layout section is background color. So we'll click on the color in order to make changes. There are a few different ways that you can go about customizing this. You can either choose from the color picker. Right here, you can enter a hex code if you have one. Or the last option, these two small icons are pulled from that gallery theme panel. 
So if you do want to choose one of your gallery theme colors, that's really easy to do. And we'll go ahead and pick one of those and save that. Then the final settings here are for your advertisements. The ads, again, will be uploaded from the gallery settings. The cycle between ads will determine how frequently the ad is displayed, and then the default ad duration will determine how long the ad stays on the screen. If you're using a video or a GIF ad that is longer than your default duration, the full video or GIF will play before cycling back to your feed. I do want to show how easy it is to swap out your ads, even remotely. So again, the advertisements are uploaded from your settings. If you would like to change the ad even remotely, you can hop into your gallery settings, remove the old advertisement, and pick a new one to upload. And similar to the featured photos, your new ad will, again, perhaps not on the very first cycle, but it will start cycling through automatically. There is no need to refresh your feed. Um, as long as there is Wi-Fi at the venue, you'll see that new ad populating pretty shortly after you change it. Once you are happy with all of your settings and customized, um, you are ready to enter full screen if you are running the feed yourself. Or again, we now have this nice long custom URL that we can copy and paste and share with the person who's setting up at the event if that's not going to be you. So there you have it. The live feed is super simple and easy to get set up and very easy to run or even share with somebody else for your event. As promised, we have some tips and tricks, so let's dive into what those are. The first one is to avoid using mixed media during your live feed. So what this means is using a single layout type during the event. Using something like GIFs together with rebounds, together with a still frame layout can start to look a little bit messy on your feed. So using one layout type um, helps with a consistent and clean look. Our next tip is to avoid the cascade refresh mode with the rebound layout. So if you remember, the cascade refresh mode is the one that changes all of the photos on the screen out in rapid succession. This can be tough to manage with the rebound layout and especially difficult if you are on a weaker Wi-Fi network. The next tip is similar, using a smaller layout grid, so fewer rows and columns, um, and then increasing the delay between photos can also help if your Wi-Fi isn't the best. So once you get to the venue, this is something that you can play around with if you need. The next tip is that if you are experiencing a lag in Chrome, try enabling hardware acceleration for your browser. This is something that can be found in the Chrome settings and we will link to our Help Center article on the live feed so that you can take a look and we instruct there exactly where to find these settings within your Chrome browser. Our final tip is to close all other browser tabs and any other programs that are running on the device that you are running your live feed from. This allows your device to give full attention to the live feed and make sure that it's running as smoothly as possible. And that's it. We hope you enjoy using the live feed at your events.